Hello and welcome back to sunny Florida. We have reached the final nine holes of the Disc Golf Pro Tour Tour Championship presented by Prodigy Disc. We are at New World Disc Golf in Jacksonville, Florida, and it is Big Sexy, Nate Sexton and Jeremy Coleman. Not only is this the final nine holes of the Disc Golf Pro Tour Tour Championships, this is the final nine holes of most of these players' 2017 season. This is it. This is the last disc golf in 2017. Put your discs away, everybody. Let's, yeah. let's take a little, let's take a break together and let the courses heal and yeah. let's get out there with our lawnmowers and we'll be back next year. And it all comes down to this. Coming into the back nine, James birdies six of the front nine, even missed a short putt to go. We've been seven down, wow. playing great golf and he has started off in the back nine, turned his driver over too much. Oh no. And that is his first real mistake, going out of bounds yeah. early and off to the right. The good news is he got across, so he's still going to move up over 400 feet. Has a good chance to save his par. And Ricky, right on James's heels in the front nine, shoots a five under, throwing a perfect drive. Great position to get up and down with a hyzer approach. That's a big drive. And Dana... Not playing his best golf on the front nine. Oh man, and it's gonna get worse right now because that is an early release and that's going straight OB and I doubt that got to the far side. So he's gonna have to play from the short side of the creek. The short side of the creek is probably pushing 500 feet to the pin, so almost out of range to save the par. Yeah, it's a little uphill if anything, the footing will be bad. And Simon has gone extraterrestrial on this, and that is just... Wow. He's got... What's slower than a putter? Because that's what he's got left to the basket. Yeah, I don't know if they make those. A piranha? Those. I don't know if they make those. And Paul's pretty low, but he has got a nice amount of speed behind the disc, and he's going to be safe, but doesn't catch that low grass, so he actually Get sacrifices probably a good 50 feet or so in slide. Yeah, and look at how awkward the lie is for Dana. I'm going to say he can't generate 500 feet of power from a kneeling forehand. <laughs> Most likely not. But, uh, yeah, he's out on the fairway. Tough break there. I think Ville Pipo might be the only person who could do that. I'm going to even say no. not even the great Ville. And look at this throw from Paul. Skips up and Fantastic. catches that hillside. Paul with a struggle finish. Went double bogey, double bogey to finish the front nine. He was six down through seven, finished at two under on the front. Have you ever seen that before? Not Beth like, with not back to very back. often. And James has sailed this. Already out of bounds, and he's sailed this well outside the circle. And that's going to uh, set up a comeback there from Paul to close in some of those strokes that James got on him on the last couple of holes. You're not going to get a comeback on Rick, though. This guy is right there for birdie. And Simon finally moves up to his 845 foot drive. Yeah. Which doesn't even make sense. It didn't really throw it that far, but you get the point. He threw it far, and now he doesn't have to throw far again. Let's see if Dana can get up and down for his five. Looks like good width. A little deep. Yeah, a bit deep. But he's in the circle. Barely. James from probably 50 feet, and that was for par. So he's looking at a bogey. This is Dana for a bogey. And he is over the top. The putter is just not cooperating for Dana right now. And Ricky converts on his birdie putt. He is now tied with James as long as James can tap in his par. And James is going to bogey. Oh, that's right. That I forgot about oh, his driving OB. And Dana. I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough position to be for Dana. Yeah. And so James is now in for bogey. So he's lost two strokes to Ricky. Ricky has now taken a one-stroke lead on the field. And Paul is going to birdie here. Great Try second claw shot. his way back into this thing. 
it's going to take with the deficit Paul has. I think it's going to take birdieing almost every hole. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, there's just a lot of birdieable holes in this bag. Oh come oh on! Oh my gosh! <sighs> and <laughs> how do you just you just want to get off the course? I yeah, guess. Yeah, absolutely. That was brutal. That's a that's a legitimate four putt. And we've mentioned this in other rounds. At the, in this format, when it's you have nothing to lose. You know, you're, you're all but certainly going to take, yeah, you're going to take last place. So you're eight strokes back from the For next closest. For sure, last place. What do you, like, you want to have fun now. You yeah. just want to throw shots that are just fun, and that's really important at this point. And he should still be, I mean, obviously proud. He, he fought through, he got here, he yep. knocked out the likes of me and you. Yep, the Cinderella story in this yeah. event. and he's, he's still going to walk away with $1,250. So he's done a great weekend. Let's see if he can throw a few great shots here. Just I'm rooting for, for you, fans. Dana. Come on, Daddy Dana. Yeah, you got it, buddy. Let's do it. Hole 11, par 3, 286. I like this hole. Straight up the middle, little elevated green. And that's looking pretty good from Ricky. Oh, catches just, just a last. little bit short after hitting that tree. It's going to leave a long putt. And Simon has been just struggling on this hole. Mm -hmm. Cannot find the line. It's just very interesting going from throwing far, throwing far, throwing far to coming to this hole. Yeah. Now all of a sudden you're touching this right down the middle. It's just a different shot. And yep. Paul shows that although it's been a while since he's thrown a mid. A mid, he can step up and do it at any time. Yeah, James. With the putter. This is starting to turn over. Needs to turn quick. Oh, not just quick enough. Barely. And that was gonna hit the base had it not hit that last tree there in the middle. Fortunately it has, and he's got a long putt for a birdie. Flip over. Get through. Something. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a putt. There's work for the man. Simon's got some work here to save par. With a driver on a flex. <laughs> okay. Oh wow. my God, are you serious? He almost <gasps> makes it going FD3 Anheuser out of the woods. What a, what a talented young feller. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> James, oh, um, I don't know if he was going to swing in enough there without hitting the branch, but it has. It doesn't matter at this point. Ricky from 50, elevated basket. Oh, my. Doesn't even care. What a putt. That was great. 50 feet or so, uphill. He won't be stopped if he keeps making those. It's just strange that, I mean, it's not... It's not. It's 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 incredibly exciting to watch him make that putt. Mm -hmm. But I'm not even the least bit surprised. Like, at what point can we pay him off with that surprise factor when he does something crazy like that? Like, I I just don't think I ever have it in me to be like, oh, I'm shocked he made another amazing yeah, putt. The dude got too good. He got too good. He got too good at the putting. Now we can't clap for him. <laughs> it's awesome though. It is awesome. I don't want him to ever stop making those putts. He either. makes me want to practice. Yeah, but that's stupid. Yeah. Hole 12, par 3, 400 feet. Really tough gap for the right-handed backhand. It's super low down that right side. Best play is going to be a hard-thrown flat forehand and let it skip into that green. But 400 feet's a long way for a low ceiling forehand. And it's a low ceiling for the backhand. It's just a low ceiling in general. Very difficult shot for the backhand player. You do not have the space to swing it out wide. Whoa, Ricky has launched this, and I don't think this is going to make it back. It's need to catch edge and skip. It's skipping. It's trying, but it's done the same thing that Paul's drive did back on hole eight. Not cross the path. He's losing all the distance. That's a pretty huge mistake given the situation. He had a comfortable lead. And Paul sees an opportunity here. He's kept it low, but not the height that he needed. Yeah, a little bit too low. And Simon is popped. Oh, wow. That is an incredible shot. So difficult to pull off that backhand line. And James is going to go the same line with his T-Bird. And it beat the tree. If it beats the tree, it's perfect. Wow. And yeah, that's awesome. Edge of the circle, a little bit of foliage to deal with, but 
Really good shot. And here is Dana trying to go that same line, overturns it a little bit, but that's safe. It's kind of surprising to see only one forehand on the hole, and that one forehand was the only shot to go B. Yeah, that is surprising. And Ricky. Oh, wow. He has left. A branch, and he's left himself 33 feet. And that's for bogey. This is Paul for a really important birdie. This is 100 feet. Wow. Oh, my goodness. An inch away from a huge, huge putt. Wow. And you see him just sitting there in the background looking onto Dana's throw. Just, wow, oh, come on. Yeah. <laughs> And that could have potentially been for three strokes if Ricky doesn't make this. Yeah, Ricky, big time pressure putt. He doesn't know what pressure means. <laughs> he is in. He feels no pressure. It's just. I think a he walk feels it, but he deals with it very, very well. He is a beast. Oh, he's not the beast. No, he's not the, but he is also. Oh, James and. Man, uncharacteristic to see him miss any putts inside the circle. This is the second one that we've seen him miss. Dana is just stacking up misses inside the circle, unfortunately. He's having a really, really rough putting round. And there's Simon's birdie. But look at Dana. He's still there clapping for oh, Simon. Of course. He's, he's a positive guy, and he's he's not going to let his performance alter the, the feel of the group. He's a pro. Mm -hmm. I mean... Not that you want to miss putts, but what's there to get upset about? Yeah. I mean, you want to put on a performance for people to watch, and but he doesn't need to prove anything. He's gotten here. He's done a great job throughout this tournament. Yeah. And at this point, it's all about just keeping you know the vibes up for the rest of the group. Yeah, and I mean, he's come through four high... I mean, this is his fourth high-pressure round. Yeah. These other guys had buys, mm -hmm. getting them all the way to this, close to this, this stage in the tournament. So it's been a long road for Dana. 13 is a par three, 382 feet. OB on the left, low ceiling, very similar feel to the previous hole. And Simon. Oh no. Just stay in bounds. And sit down. <laughs> wow. A self admitted wow there from Simon. He has had self admitted struggles with the backhand this year with these kind of shots. That he just has so much power, it's hard to hold back. Mm hmm And Paul with a fantastic shot to 15 feet. How easy did he make that look? Very. That, that just looked like it was such an easy shot, and it really is anything but. And this is about the hardest shot I can even imagine. And <laughs> wow. And James just rips a T-bird, no fade, no flip, underneath a limb that he almost hits his head on if he walks under it. <laughs> And this is a scary play. This is a lot of angle, but it has cut back in bounds. Nice. Just short of the circle, right where we saw him make the last putt for bogey on the previous hole. He's kind of warmed up to that distance now. Data, get down. Uh, hits the branch. That branch has been taking a beating. This yeah, week. just absolutely pummeled. Simon, big Anheuser. Little short, but not bad. Outside the circle, just barely. And caught something early low that kind of slowed it down from the beginning, but he's still up there, has a chance for a par. And Dana is just really not able to find his, his game right now. In, round, in the previous round, he actually threw one in from about this distance. Come on. And gives that, that a bit of a close. run. That was pretty close. Big putt for Ricky here. Wow! Oh, no! Dances up and out and just falls out the side of the basket. And it looks like Paul might be able to claw back another stroke. Yeah, that would be two cons or three strokes and <laughs> or no, two strokes and two holes. <coughs> yep. With a miss putt that he had from 75 in the last hole. And Simon's in on his par, and here's James for his birdie. Nice. James isn't going anywhere. And there it is. Paul's in for his birdie. Starting to mount that comeback. Yeah. You, know, you know when Paul's on the course, you just feel that the energy that he's out there. You know, he's probably the most famous for making those Sunday runs. Yep. Where he just claws back strokes from insurmountable leads. 
He did it. He did it last week. He's trying to do it again this week. Yeah, I mean, he down uh, four after the front nine, and all of a sudden he's one back of the tie for the lead with James and Ricky. Simon's only two back. This is becoming a very exciting finish. Wow. Par five, 1,000 feet. Starts out as a tunnel shot and then goes way, way left to the tune of about 750 feet. So you're gonna need to throw a low shot that hyzers hard and gets a big skip, hopefully, before you come up to that out of bounds wall or path that's at the back end of the fairway. The only thing you have to avoid is anything left. And yeah, if you go, all if you cut it off early, that's a big, big problem. Yeah, there's just a lot of, you, I mean, you can, you can't see through anything on the right there. So, Paul's done a good job there, just getting through the gap, setting himself open for an open second shot. And James with the aggressive destroyer. Oh, oh well, there it is. And that's, as I say that, I have not personally been back there, and I hope I never go back there. It looks super, super thick. Paul Ulibarri told me a absolute horror story about a ball of literally 1,000 ticks exploding onto his body. He said 2,000. Yeah. You, yeah. You're, you're, you, you cut the man. That's true. I halved his ticks. You have the number of ticks. Great shot from Simon there. He actually finished the round and took his clothes off and took a shower and threw his clothes away. So that's... A uh, horror story. Yeah. This is real. This is Florida. Don't come down here. This is ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, you should come down. Here. <laughs> no, but Jacksonville's out, great. <laughs> but watch out for those uh, <laughs> tick balls. And Dana's through the gap, and we just have one player who did not make the gap. James is in a real heap of trouble here. He's going out the top with the tomahawk. And he is not going out the top oh, of the tomahawk. Oh, back in the woods. Oh, this could get really, really ugly quick. And can he get out from here? He just needs it's hard to say if this shot, this could almost be worse position. He's going backhand here. Get out. Where is it? It is not out. It is not out yet. Oh, my goodness. James again. This is just when things. Fourth shot <sighs> finds the fairway, and now he's where he wanted his drive. Wow. Paul goes big hyzer playing for the birdie. Setting himself up for a short up shot. Big skip though, so that'll make it a little tougher. And Dana has a nice angle on this. Kept it high and flat. And he's in the middle of the fairway, less than 300 to the pin. Ricky a little bit obstructed here, but he's got such great power. Mm. Oh, but he's actually played that a little too safe, staying in the woods. He should still have an opportunity to birdie, but not what he was looking for. I would say he probably has 400 feet left. James trying to get aggressive, but this is too low. It's still all the distance you really need to set himself up for his bogey, I believe? Double. Double. That was shot five. Yeah, so yeah, up in six and down in seven if he, if he executes. Simon with a big shot. Not, you, yeah, Simon's almost at that point where he's got to be thinking, I have to get something special mm -hmm. here. He's, you know, you're trailing these two players. With, the, the players of of our generation. Yeah, you, you, you've got to do something extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And um, Ricky has put himself safely in putting range. But just outside the circle, he'll have that for birdie. And Dana, let's see if Dana can get back on this bandwagon here of birdies. Yeah, come on. Oh, yeah, that's a great nice shot. shot. 
about 18 feet left. He has not been putting very well today, but really a pulling for him to make that one. Paul looking for a birdie, and he is absolutely parked. And James wants to stop the bleeding. He's doing a great shot. Almost think that maybe he was possibly thinking throw it in. Yeah, that's basically what it would take to have any kind of chance. I mean, he's he may be too far gone. This hole really has ended any reasonable hope for James, I think. Yeah, double bogey when this Ricky guy has misses missed. the wow. putt. So Paul has, has mounted the comeback. He's all the way back. Wow. After those back-to-back do -back double bogeys. And there's Dan <laughs> yeah. hitting a birdie putt. Yeah. The crowd loves it. Everybody knows what it feels like to go through those struggles. Well played, T to Green. And Simon loves it. <laughs> Just like McDonald's. <laughs> He's loving it. <laughs> Not getting paid for that, but I'll accept money if you want to send me some McDonald's. <laughs> Come on, Ronald. <laughs> There it is. He's in for his birdie. Ricky is tapped in for par. And, uh, yeah, the exciting finish that we always wanted. We got it it's now. It's here. Six, six, five. Number one, number two, number three. I feel like we saw this last week. Yeah, we did. I think I, I might have been too hasty saying James is uh, James is not really that far back. I, feel, I felt like a double bogey would hurt him worse. 15 is a par three, 222 foot island hole with a double mando. Absolutely critical for these guys to get on the green here and make birdie because this is the easiest hole we've got left. And if you do miss it, it's basically automatic bogey. Yeah, I mean, a bogey here spells the end of your event. Yep. And Paul's hanging Paul's, out wide. This could be low. Skips off the wall. Oh my goodness. And he's safe. In other rounds, I think we maybe see him go for more of the Ace run, Simon may be trying to give this a bit here. Yeah, he is. And he is a little bit wide, but still inside the circle. Dana after that birdie, trying to get something going, and this is shanked. Misses the Mando and misses the island, unfortunately. He will have to go to the drop zone. Big shot here for Ricky. And he is giving us a bit of a run, and wow. he's just long inside the circle. Somewhat challenging putt left, but that's only challenging for normal mortal human beings. Ricky is not that. James with another ace run, a little wide, a little long. We will see Dana from the drop zone now. Come on, throw us in. Throw it That's in. A good bid. Wow. Oh, just behind. That would have been cool. James for birdie. Big putt here. Oh, come on. Not quite. Just a bit high and to the left, perhaps. Pretty good putt, but did not stick in. And this is equally huge putt for Ricky. Just lower and a little more center. Nice. Big adjustment to make there. Huge putt. Simon in for the birdie. as well. Dana will have a bogey after going out of bounds. And James, very close to making that putt, but mm. he'll have to tap in for the par. And two back going into this one. It's going to be three back. He's still got a chance to catch Simon, perhaps, yeah. with any slip-up. It's looking grim there to catch the leaders. Yeah. Hole 16, par 3, 265, straight up the middle. 
We're gonna see these guys go with backhand mid ranges and putters, I would think. There's also a forehand flex route available that works, but I think the preferred play yeah. is gonna be straight up the middle. We're not seeing that today with these guys. These guys are gonna be going backhand right down the middle. I, su I can't expect anyone to do anything else. Yep. Paul going back to that McPro Rock 3. And late turning his way all the way up there. Man, it looked like that was going to be left side, but just the yeah. slowest bit of fade all the way down the fairway yeah. inside the circle. Simon with a perfect shot. This is sliding right to the pin. Another look at it. Fades just back to the basket after missing the tree. Beautiful. Absolutely phenomenal. And here is the forehand harp from Ricky. And this is not online, but wow. it's through and it's in the circle. <laughs> okay. I, mm, two time? I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm catching heat for saying that, but I uh, that's that's a good break for Rick. James. A huge moment, too. Well done. And now Dana. Four drives in a row inside the circle. Needs Come on, turn. Dana. No. Oh. Got the trees. And this is this is a pretty tricky hole. To go five for five inside the circle would be pretty impressive. It would be. There's a lot of trees. And with Paul sitting about 22 feet away, this is a big putt for Rick. Wow. Comes up clutch again. And James has just got it over the rim. Nice. Another shot there of the hair bouncing and flowing. Definitely. Shout out to Pantene Pro V. And Paul gets that one dead center. It's like one of those want to get away moments from Southwest. It's, yeah. It's not, it's, it, there's a lot worse things than playing in front of a lot of players or a lot of fans yep. and not playing your best, but it's just, not that much fun. It's just not that much fun. It's just, you know, you want to see, you want to see in these moments, just do something for fun, you know, yeah. and it's just not fun to miss putts. Yeah. You're feeling for Dana right now. But four great birdies. Can you believe it? After being all tied last week, and these three guys come back, <laughs> and here they are, eight, eight, seven, two holes to go. I mean, if you like drama and you like disc golf, don't try to take a bathroom break now. No. Bad time for bathroom breaks, but this is a good time for Simon to maybe catch a stroke. He's got so much power. This hole requires a huge hyzer shot. Yeah. Swinging really far left. If Paul and Ricky don't pick up the birdie here, Simon could gain that stroke, and we could have a three-way tie going into 18. This is crushed, though. Paul is way up there. Finds the okay. edge of the circle. All right, well, that's kind of got to be a bummer for Simon to see that. Let's see what Simon does. That's kind of early-ish. Oh, no, never mind. That's late. A little bit wider line than Paul took. But he's got to look. And Ricky... Ricky is really high, really wide. And that's kind of falling a little bit fast. But it's there. Pin high, circle's edge. Common place to be on this hole. It's hard to do a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. James... Ultra aggressive here, so high and tight. And that is too high. Oh, and it doesn't clear. And that does not even cross the inbounds line. He is gonna be moving up a mere 75 feet or so. And any chance he had to catch Simon, yeah, that's gone. gone. And Dana is just inside yeah. the circle, oh, just outside the circle, but. Big drive. And that shot was so similar to James. That's an unfortunate break for, for Conrad. James goes super high again. 
Tempting fate a bit. Catches the top of the tree. Playing Plinko. And he's got a putt. Okay. He's falling down 34 feet away. Dana for a big birdie here. Mm -mm. No, not happening. Mm -mm. Simon to keep hope alive. Oh. And now Ricky and Paul have putts to kind of shut it down and make it a two-man race going into the last hole. And, yeah, Ricky's in. Just a free throw. But like a Steph Curry free throw. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people, it's not like a Shaq free throw. No. It's like one of those sure thing free throws. Oh, James misses that. She even gives a shout out to Rick Barry. Sure. The underhand free throw guy. Yeah, that's the putt is much more similar to the Rick Barry. And Paul from just inside. Wow. He yeah. catches a bit of the band, but it drops in. Even he's going to smile a little bit about that. Yeah, he just snaked that right under the rim. <laughs> and Simon's in for his par. He's, Simon's now in that kind of strange place where he has a couple strokes on fourth, a couple strokes back of yeah. first. Seems like a good time to go for an eagle. Yeah, it might be time for him to do something fun on 18. You know, he's got the the risk on both sides is kind of taken away. Uh-huh. Dana's in for his par. Unfortunate double bogey there for James. Definitely. But wow. 9-9. <laughs> nine, nine. 2017, I mean, the season of two players... And look at this, nine under, nine under, going into the par five, 18th hole. 988 feet, you got three mandos, you got a golf green, you got a sand trap, <sighs> you got out of bounds up near the pin. What more do you want? I mean, if New World knew that this was gonna be the finale, I, I, I mean, this is, the, this is the dream situation. Oh yeah. So this is a really big tee shot here. Here goes Paul T-Bird, looking to turn it over. Needs to miss the tree. Oh, it needs to not do that. That has wow. gone. That is in a terrible spot. And Ricky is just sitting here and thinking to himself, one clean tee shot is going to pretty much. Oh, and he takes a bit of a tree, but this roller's smoked. He's made it past both mandatory. It doesn't even matter. He's The sand is a free drop. It's not out of bounds. He's going to go to the drop zone, which is in a pretty good spot. And he is clear of everything. The only thing that stands in his way of winning right now is just a mistake. Simon with a slip on the tee, and this is cooking into the woods. And he's going with that PD2 there that he's well known for laying down for some epic rollers. Just a slip on the tee prevented us from seeing maybe something really special. Dana trying to roll her as well, but it turns into an air shot. Clever shot. You don't see the roller air shot to play too often. Yeah. Uh, confuses the fans. It confused us. I mean, well done there from Dana, pulling out all the tricks. James going to try to unleash a roller. This looks too heavy on cut to me, though. I can't, I can't imagine this is going to stand up. Yeah, that's what happens when you go with a stable destroyer <laughs> through the... The cameraman's legs, I believe this through is the, the five hole. Yep, right through the five hole. But he hasn't gone too deep in the woods. But Paul, however, has standstill, roadrunner, roller, heavy cut, and I mean, we're saying hello to the woods again. Unfortunately, I got, I mean, Ricky's in the fantastic position now. It's Ricky's to, to lose. He'd have to snatch defeat out of the jaws of victory at this yeah. point. Dana just crushes a roller too far. And Simon from the woods. So many players in the woods on this hole. Usually that's, yeah. you're not seeing too much. I guess that's what you get when guys are going all out. <laughs> yeah, this hasn't necessarily been one of the harder holes in the course. It's actually... Wait a minute. That was Ricky's shot. He just hit a tree. Okay. I don't think he clear. I don't think he missed the Mando, but I'm not sure that he's cleared beyond it. So, that could take Birdie entirely out of play. The situation is Paul has to get up and down for a par. He needs a par. And Ricky has to get up anywhere near the circle to put the pressure on Paul. Simon, you've lost your mind. Hmm. Did it make? It did make it, didn't it? Okay. 
incredible. That doesn't even exist, folks. He just made something up. That Simon was. I has think that was created like, a new chapter. CG, of, that was CGI, wasn't it? Good God. That can't have been real. I just wish people were here to see these things and understand the where brilliance. Where are you guys? Like, where? Why aren't you guys here? <laughs> right? Wow. I mean, Paul is <sighs> deep in the woods, pitching okay. out, and wow, it not didn't really even get out. I think that's gonna spell doom for him. There's. No way he's getting up and down from here. If he does, it would be a par. If he gets around this mandatory, which, which he has negotiated. It. I mean, that's a big shot. And look at this. And he's got a good skip as okay, well. Okay, okay. So he's he's 100 feet. Mm, I'd give it more like 130. Okay, okay. Which I think he can putt 100. I don't know if he can putt 130. I think Dana just put that in a tree. <laughs> just stayed up there, so. <laughs> just put that for there for later. Ricky around the corner, and but not. That's all he needed to do, though. Yeah, I mean, he's not parked. It's not a birdie, most likely, so. You know, it, here's the situation. Ricky can lay that up for his part, but that would mean that Paul would have to throw it in. Yeah, I mean, Ricky will already know what Paul has done by the time he right. approaches his lie. So it all comes down to Paul here. I mean, we've seen miracles from him before. See if he's got one last one. I'm not counting out yet. No way. James stays inbounds. And this is it. Paul from, as Germ called, 130 feet. It's got good speed. Oh, it's just off the line. And Ricky can lay up for the win now. now. I think he had the right height. It looked like he had all the distance he needed, the right height, drifted off to the left, and this is going to be a Disc Golf Pro Tour Tour Championship win for Ricky. Swept the season in points. Well, he didn't sweep all the wins, but he took the wins in yeah. points, and now he's going to take the win in the Pro Tour Championship. And that was Simon's putt for birdie. Ricky has the win assured now. Dana will finish fifth with a smile on his face, I'm sure. It's all over now, buddy. Yep. And James, kind of like Nico the day before, hasn't just hasn't done playing yet. And neither is Paul. These guys just want to keep playing. Paul is beyond the point of caring too much about that putt. He's missed that. But what's the situation between Simon and Paul now? Well... That's actually an interesting point. I Maybe he tied him up? Tied? I'm not sure, actually, but it doesn't matter. The story of the day now is Ricky with, for the win. Two-time world champion, two-time disc golf Pro Tour points winner, one-time Pro Tour championship winner. World Tour points winner. This guy's making a great bid for player of the year. Yeah, I think that might have closed it out. He's just played phenomenal this season. I mean, it's been a one-two all year with him and Paul, and... The edge has to go to Ricky right now. And there was a tie between Paul and Simon. I don't think that was the last of Paul's words. I don't think he knew, maybe was thinking about that on that final putt. But congratulations to Ricky Wysocki for a tremendous win, tremendous season. Congratulations to everybody on a tremendous season. That's going to pretty much wrap it up for us. We've had such a good time being part of Jomez Productions coverage this year, and we really appreciate all the fans for watching, all your comments. Please keep it going. Please keep supporting Disc Golf Media. Thank you to Dynamic Discs for their support. Thank and, you to uh, yeah, Dave. Yeah, right? Dave actually got a hold of him. He made it. He landed safely in Paris. Oh, great. That's great. Yeah, actually, I guess he said he's going to some kind of cooking school, like a fancy French cooking school. So I think we're going to have to call him David Fancy Schmancy Francy Clancy. And he's just looking for that Michelin star. Mm -hmm. He's going to do well with that. But as Nate said, thank you guys so much for all your fan support this year. It means a lot to us. And can't thank you guys all enough for what you guys have done for the sport of disc golf, helping us grow it. Your views mean a lot to us. Your comments mean a lot to us. And Really looking forward to coming back in 2018 and giving you the best coverage and content possible. Thank you guys so much. See you next year. 2017 season has been incredible for us <laughs> over at Joe Mice Productions. We want to thank all the fans that have been there for us along the way. And I want to present the very oh, first nice. hot Michael Morris to our most viable commentators. <laughs> oh, nice. Nate wow. Sexton and Jeremy Coley. This is beautiful.
beautiful. Wow. Want to say a few words to the fans? <laughs> this Speak is, into the microphone. Please. This is probably, this, I mean, this is a, an honor up there at the, the top of my career. This is a beautiful, beautiful piece of trophy. <laughs> this is metal. This is definitely a metal. Very, very classy, nice thing to have. I'm going to keep this as long as I live. I, this is actually my first ever microphone trophy. Uh, and it means a lot. And joining the, the coverage this year, uh, joining the lawnmowers in the back and the airplanes, and the, sh the short, the door shutting and the, the eating during commentary and all that. It's just, no, it's, it's been so much fun. And, um, are you seeing this? This is amazing. I, these are sweet. They make discs. Look these at are this. The, these are fundraiser discs for you guys. This is so cool. Yeah, we, we Innova hooked us up and got us set up with some fundraiser discs. So we're going to start selling Here, these at the end of the video. Oil. Limited edition, we're going to send hopefully a hundred of them right out the door. Oh, this is beautiful. And uh, you guys are going to get going to get most of the proceeds there. So thank just you. kind of as a thank you and kind of hope, Dude, hopefully send us so in the next cool. season. Yeah, man. Thank you guys so yeah, much. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. I didn't even Seriously, notice, I I can't, didn't notice like, the dish. I, I, just, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys, I mean, you guys wow. too. I mean, I've said it before to everybody, but I mean, these guys just time and time again, I, every morning before I, the round. This, I don't even and, want you uh, to have that, though. That's a D-line. They you, put you up all kinds of time for us, and we definitely appreciate oh, no, it. It's it not easy. It doesn't pay well, but we just at least well, want to do as much as we can to we thank you guys for everything. Obviously, we don't do it for the pay. We we enjoy this. And we, we do, it, do for it for the slow mess. Yeah. Do it for the slow mess. Doing this uh, has <laughs> has really been, it's really made 2017 the best year of my career, uh, just in terms of living life the way I want to and, and being a part of this is, has been huge. I mean, I I can't wait to make this, this thing bigger and better. Here's coming. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Hey everybody, Nate and Jerm here. Thanks everyone for an awesome 2017. The Jomez guys have just surprised us and shown us this amazing XL stamp. We've got 100 of these limited edition discs. There's some destroyers, there's some P2s. We're gonna sign 25 of them. If you make an order, you might be the lucky one to get them, but there's no way to know. Thanks for tuning in this year, guys. It means so much to us. We're really helping the sport grow. You're helping the sport grow, and uh, it just blew me away when uh, Jomez got these made for us. Totally, we had no idea these were coming up. So be sure to get your hands on one of these. They're gonna be limited. It's They're the coolest be awesome. stamp I've ever seen. Yeah, it's amazing.